Hey, and today we're exploring the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial. Here by the beaches of Normandy. You're going to see the history behind the D-Day and the memorial dedicated to the families around the area. This is a World War II cemetery and memorial in colleville sur mer in Normandy, France. Its history began on June 8, 1944. The 607 Quartermaster Graves Registration Company of the U.S. First Army established a temporary cemetery, the first American cemetery on French soil during the war. After the war, the present-day cemetery was established a short distance to the east of the original site. It was dedicated on July 19, 1956, in the presence of American Admiral Kincaid of the U.S. Navy representing President Dwight D. Eisenhower and French General Ganival representing President René Coty. Like all other overseas American cemeteries in France for World War I and II, France has granted the United States a special, perpetual concession to the land occupied by the cemetery, free of any charge or any tax to honor the forces. However, it does not benefit from the extraterritorially, which means it is still in French soil. This cemetery is managed by the American Battle Monuments Commission, a small independent agency of the U.S. federal government, under congressional acts that provide yearly financial support for maintaining them with most military and civil personnel employed abroad. This cemetery is located on a bluff overlooking Omaha Beach, one of the landing beaches of the Normandy invasion and the English Channel. It covers 172.5 acres and contains the remains of about 9,388 American military dead. Most of them were killed during the invasion of Normandy and ensuing military operations in World War II. When the time comes for a permanent burial, the next of kin eligible to make decisions were asked. If they wanted their loved ones repatriated for a permanent burial in the U.S. or interned at the closest overseas cemetery. The layout of the cemetery is divided into 10 plots. It forms a Latin cross with the chapel in its middle and the memorial and wall of the missing at its base. It faces the United States in the direction of a point between Eastport and Lubeck, Maine. This is accidental as the cemetery was built parallel to the beach on the lands granted by the French. So starting with the tour, you will be greeted by the visitor center which was opened on 2007. The center is dedicated by the American Battle Monuments Commission on June 6, 2007 during the commemoration of the 63rd anniversary of D-Day. Here you can find information about the war, from where it started, the invasion, and the occupation, with some of the relics left behind. The exhibits are very detailed. There are also information about the soldiers, the resistant fighters, the volunteers, and their own intimate stories.
Of course, there are also abundant details about the landings in Normandy, D-Day, and the maps, and the plants, and the images and videos during that time. Also, there is a detailed route of the landing at the beaches. With information about the soldiers on both sides with personal items and equipments. Near the end of the gallery is the information during the liberation from the cities and towns around France. One can go back in time through the giant pictures in the exhibit and the story behind it, with more items left behind. At the end is the gallery dedicated to the ones who sacrificed their lives during the war. After leaving the center, the first place we visit was the Omaha Beach Overlook. There is also an orientation table which overlooks the beach and depicts the landings at Normandy. It is designed by Robert Foster which is made of Swedish black granite. Then we came across the cemetery itself. These burials are marked by white lasso marble headstones, 9,238 of which are Latin crosses for Protestants and Catholics and 151 of which are Stars of David for the Jews. Since these were the only three religions recognized at the time by the United States Army, no other type of markers are present. The cemetery contains the graves of 45 pairs of brothers, 30 of which buried side by side, a father and his son, an uncle and his nephew, two pairs of cousins, three generals, four chaplains, four civilians, four women, 147 African Americans, and 20 Native Americans. 304 unknown soldiers are buried among the other service members. Their headstones read, Here rests in honored glory a comrade in arms known but to God. Windy. Windy and cold. <laughs> 
At the center of the cemetery lies a multi-confessional chapel. Its altar in black and gold marble reads, I give into them eternal life and they shall never perish. The stained glass behind it bears a Latin cross and presents a Star of David as well as Alpha and Omega symbol meant to represent all other religions. On its ceiling lies a spectacular mosaic by Leon Kroll. Completed in 1953, it comprises 500,000 tiles and tells a full surround story of war and peace. One side depicts Columbia, the goddess of liberty, representing American blessing, her rifle-bearing son, before he departs to fight overseas. Above him, a warship and a bomber push through the sea and air toward land, on the opposite side of the dome. There, a red-capped Marian figure, personifying France, bestows a laurel wreath upon the same young man. His now lifeless body leans against her as she cradles his head in her lap. Above them, the return of peace is illustrated with an angel, a dove, and a homeward-bound troop ship. These two figures can be seen again as statues guarding the end of the cemetery. As for the memorial, it consists of a semicircular colonnade with a loggia of each and containing maps and narratives of military operations. It is built in medium hard limestone from Upper Burgundy. Two of the maps designed by Robert Foster are 32 feet long and 20 feet high. At the center is a 22-foot bronze statue entitled The Spirit of American Youth Rising from the Waves by Donald DeLue. Over the arches of the memorial is engraved, This embattled shore, portal of freedom, is forever hallowed by the ideals, the valor, and the sacrifices of our fellow countrymen. The wall of the missing consists of a semicircular gardens that bears the 1,557 engraved names of service members declared missing in action. If you want to know more about the Normandy landings, check out the description below for the Omaha Beach landing during D-Day. So that's it for the brief history, the information, and the sights to see inside the American Cemetery and Memorial. Hey guys, I hope you learned something from D-Day invasion and the memorial to the soldiers. Till next time. Bye. So guys, if you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel and feel free to comment. Hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell, hit the bell.